Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Ostan and I read books and in this edition of Ostan Reads Books I'm talking about Maya Lundes The History of Bees. First of all this book is one of the most selling books on this side of the millennia from any Norwegian author and it was published in 2015. This is Maya Lundes first novel and her books are now translated to over 40 languages. This book is the first one in what is to become the Climate Quartet. The last book in the quartet is going to be published later this year so that's why I felt it was relevant reading this now. And in that series each of the books are discussing different sides of the climate change and in this book it's all about the bees surprisingly. There are three stories from the future, past and present. All of these stories we follow alongside each other and they're all about the beekeepers. So the first one is set in England in 1852. It's about a man trying to make the perfect beehive. Then we go to the US in 2007 and we meet the beekeeper that is suddenly experiencing troubles with both his son and his bees. Then we have the last story and that is set in a dystopian future in China in 2098 where we meet people that have to behave like bees in order to keep the world sustainable. Before I read this book many people said that the stories were woven together and they were but just at the later stage in the novel I thought they would have much more to do with each other throughout the novel and I sort of felt like I wish they were more woven together, especially when the stories were kinda slow. But in a sense you can say that of course they're woven together from the start because they're all about the bees. The second theme that is really apparent in this story is the parent-child theme. In all three stories you have really important sidetracks having to do with their children. And in the first book I struggled to follow this theme entirely. I felt it was a bit boring. The father obviously had issues and struggled to connect with his son, but that part just didn't grip me in any way. Then we have the second story in the present where the son doesn't want to become a beekeeper like his father and his father really struggles with this. I found this story way more engaging than the first one. Also in this story the son talks about climate change and not eating meat and I felt this story just was a bit more relevant. Then in the last story in the dystopian future the child goes missing after something significant happens and this is where my interest for this book was really sparked. Missing children or parents losing their children is apparently something that's really really engaging to me. It's weird when you have small kids that something like that should matter more. And these thoughts about the relationship towards their children also reflects my relationship towards the story as a whole because the oldest story I thought was the least engaging, the dystopian future one was the far most engaging and I also liked the middle one. If it hadn't been for the dystopian future I do not know how I would have enjoyed this book because I always was rushing to get to the dystopian parts but then again if I didn't have the backstory from the two other parts Maybe I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much, we'll never know, but I think they are sort of helped each other. But I needed that dystopian part to enjoy it at least. So this is of course a climate change novel and there's really a lot of things in this book I hadn't thought of before, which I found interesting and scary. The story isn't as dystopian as I thought it would be and I'm kind of a bit sad because I like the dystopian parts. But in my head I managed to make a new dystopian novel just based on the things I read in this one. Because it really makes you think about consequences, the consequences that we know of. And also it made me think about the consequences that we don't know yet. Just seeing the connections between insects dying and oceans rising and vice versa and all the things in between is very scary. That's of course why it's important to read this book so you understand a bit more and and maybe you make different choices after you've read it. I at least am not going to cut my grass for a while. And that has several benefits. A thing that I thought about quite often when I read this novel was that it was based in the US, UK and China. I think that for the two first ones that was logical and the last one China. It just felt a bit unnatural and I don't know why, it just felt like you have three big countries, you might want this novel to sell in these three parts of the world. 
I don't know, it just felt a bit weird. Why wasn't it placed just in three random places? I get that there's historical context and this book is said to be really well researched, so I guess she had her reasons. Maybe this isn't the point at all. The language of the book was easy to understand. It wasn't anything special. I didn't think that, wow, this was a beautiful line, but that doesn't matter that much to me, as you might know. As long as I understand what it says, I'm very happy with that. Also, many people say that this is a really slow novel and they might be right. I didn't think about it when I read it, but afterwards I thought that, well, they might have a point. But the thing is that I enjoyed the dystopian part so, so much that I sort of rushed through it. Also, I read this book on my way to a festival, so I read it in two days. And when I read books in a short period of time, they seem less slow than maybe they would have otherwise. Also, I didn't have that high expectations for it to be thrilling, which I really found it to be. And that could also mean that I found it less slow than I otherwise would have. Who knows? All in all, I really loved this book. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. I rushed through it because I was entertained. The topic is important and yeah, just a really good reading experience. If you want to check it out, I will leave a link in the comments. And I'm now thinking about reading the sequel, but if you have other suggestions for books about the climate change that are well worth the read, please recommend me some of them in the comments. And thank you for watching this book review. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!